it's Natalie here and I am wishing Illustrated Faith a very happy second birthday. I am so proud of the journey that we have all been on together over this last couple of years and I'm really excited about having been a part of it almost sort of from the beginning and so today I thought I was going to share a little bit of a different um, video with you today. I'm not going to make any pages um, but what I wanted to show you was a little bit of a look through some of the things that I've done in the past and uh, teach you maybe some of the things or share with you I guess some of the things that I've learned about illustrating my faith um, which I've been doing for almost two years now myself. Can I just own up and say when I started this um, I didn't know what to do, like many of you, right? I, I was thinking, um, you've got to probably do something fabulous in your journaling Bible because you know you have to share it on social media and you know that everybody's going to compare it to everything else. And that is such a load of baloney. This, I'm sharing you with you, this was my very first entry um, and it was very super simple. In fact, most of the stuff that you see here is actually a bleed through from the black back page. Um, all I did for my very first entry was I stamped this little bird, I stuck this little tag in that says today was a good one, um, I had this little printable and these other little stamps here and I just colored them in and that was it. There's no journaling, there's no writing, there's not even a date but trust me this was the first one um, and it was just very super simple. But it really um, started my uh, passion for this because that was so easy and this is you know I think one of the challenges when you think about sitting down and illustrating your faith is that uh, there's this perception that you have to make these beautiful pages and it doesn't have to be like that at all what it is about is getting into the word it's about you reading your Bible it's about spending time with God and then if you want to respond to that in a creative way however that is for you then you've got an opportunity to do that at the same time. And so if it's stamping or sticking things in or writing or drawing or painting or whatever it is for you, um, that's exactly what illustrating your faith is about. So the number one thing that I've learned is that you do not need to be an artist. I um, often um, look at the beautiful pages that other people share on Instagram where they've done these fabulous illustrations um, and drawings and this is not me and even just showing you a flip through like this you can see that hardly anywhere ever have I ever drawn a picture <laughs> because I can't do it. <laughs> What I can do um, is stamp things, um, use my uh, scrapbooking, um, you know, embellishments to stick in. I can write. I think <laughs> most of us can write, um, uh, and I can um, paint the odd thing like a rainbow. That that doesn't take any great artistic ability, um, but I can have fun and I can just do what. Um, I feel is me in here so the number one thing I've learned is that you do not need to be an artist you use what you've got on hand um, you don't need any particular supplies I think uh, you need a pen I think that's all it takes maybe you want some colored textures or something uh, and then if you've got something extra like some stamps or some stickers then this is the next step but I don't think you need to have any special supplies having those things is a bonus um, the second thing that I quickly learned early on was that there's no mistakes here. I think that's another thing is that we fear that we're going to do some horrible, um, you know, messy thing in here and it's going to be a complete disaster. But you know what? Who cares if you do that? Because one, um, it, there are no mistakes. Like again, it's just about you spending time in the word. And so if it doesn't look the most beautiful thing in the world at the end, it really doesn't matter because that's not the point. Um, but two, um, and I'm trying to find some examples here is that, uh, if you do make something that you really just can't seem to get past, then you just cover it up. You can definitely cover things up. So I have sometimes just done some whatever, like that. Um, and uh, if I needed to, I could just paint all over the top of that and start again. Or I can stick 
um, things over the back. Like quite often people say to me, um, you know, when I use my watercolors and whatnot, does it bleed through to the back? And the answer is yes, indeed, it certainly does. Um, so you can see here how it uh, it does bleed through to the back. And I'm okay with that. I don't let that stop me from doing what I feel like I need to do in the time. But if I wanted to journal here for Psalm 25, for example, then um, I can stick a piece of paper over here. I can stick a sticker over the top. I could paint over it with acrylic paint or gesso or something and cover it up and start again. And so I don't believe that that should hold you back from Bible journaling as well. I want to show you, um, I think, the very, very worst page that I've ever done in here. Um, and I haven't covered it up. And let's see if I can quickly find it, if I can remember where it was. I think it's in, um, I think it's in Romans. So let me uh, quickly flip to that. Oh yes, here it is. Okay, you ready for this disaster? Look at that. Like, bleh. <laughs> but um, this was just me playing around and I thought, oh, it'd be a really great idea if I can just make these bold words all over my page. Um, and I was journaling out one of these verses, um, which was really sort of meaningful to me uh, you know and if you can read what it says it's, it's justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ and what a beautiful promise that is but um, clearly ultimately uh, I don't think that this page looks pretty and that's okay and so I don't think I've ever shared this anywhere else but I'm um, being very open with you today that certainly not all of the pages that I make um, turn out the way I want them to. They certainly don't necessarily turn out pretty and I certainly don't necessarily show all of my um, Bible journaling pages in any kind of social media context. And that is okay. So you do what makes you happy in the time and don't be afraid of making mistakes. And then um, I think the other thing just to say is that I've clearly sort of evolved over time and I've done a lot of Bible journaling in this journaling Bible. Um, but uh, when I started to then step outside of this as well, uh, that opened up a whole new world as, as well. So I think um, the other thing that I've learned is to take the limits off. So don't limit yourself to thinking, uh, if I'm going to do some Bible journaling, I'm going to journal in my Bible because clearly there are a whole other host of different ways that you can sort of um, write out your faith or embellish your faith or um, and you know what I mean by embellish your faith uh, be creative with your faith and there's lots of resources these days so um, I've also got like all of these things on the go at the same time which I just do at various points whenever I feel like I need to so you know this is the praise book and I think um, this allows um, bigger blank pages to write a lot more. So I do a lot of my sort of sermon notes in here um, or things where I really have a lot of writing to do. So that's a great resource um, here in my praise book. I also tend to use um, this um, journal from uh, Dayspring a lot. And again, the beauty with this is that they're actually just blank pages with little Bible verses down the bottom. And I've filled lots and lots of these pages in um, again when I've got lots of things to say or have let my children have a go um, and uh, not be afraid uh, of letting them um, express themselves and their faith in here as well. Um, similarly, there's definitely lots of times in my Bible here and you might have seen some of these as I flick through where I've let my children um, just do things. Um, because I think that this is a real important thing uh, to be sharing our faith and not only with the community but of course with our family and when my kids see me doing Bible journaling this has been a real prompt for them as well to want to get into the word and learn um, what I'm learning and to do what I'm doing so I don't make them um, have any limitations in what they use and what they do and let them you know do this in my bible and this is these pages are so special to me and then of course the big thing that's happening um in more recent months is these fabulous devotionals that illustrated faith are putting out um and this has changed my perspective on things a great deal as well so i'm now also spending a lot of time um, in these devotionals and illustrating directly into them and this is the same thing you know it's just about 
having fun and responding in the way that you're called to respond um, and uh, really just letting your creative the way that you want to create and do it um, in response to what you're learning through the word so I tend to keep um, the journals or devotionals that I'm working on um, together in the one spot and so this was the previous one um, and in something like one of these dories uh, I get to include um, some supplies in here as well so these are all the different ways that I'm approaching um, journaling my faith or illustrating my faith um, and not just keeping it limited to my journaling Bible. But I just wanted to share with you today some of the things that I've learned over my last two years and hopefully encourage you to start this journey if that's what you're feeling called to do or encourage those who have been hesitant um, to do more to really dive in further. Um, or just to hopefully give you a few hints and tips um, on different things that you can do in your journaling Bible. Once again, happy birthday, Illustrated Faith, and I cannot wait to see what the future is holding for us as we journey together with this. See you guys.